All right, today's lesson is uh, volumes of solids of revolution. So in the AP calculus, AB, um, what we need to do is we need to talk about volumes and we need to connect uh, volumes with integrals, okay? And so we know about how to use integrals as areas. And now we're going to make this connection to volumes. So, and the key is that we're going to um, uh, use the concept of revolving an area about an axis, okay? So let me just kind of set this up. Don't, don't worry about this chart here. Uh, don't worry about that yet. I'm going to get to that in, in a little bit. But if you think about what we know already about integrals, okay? So let's just say we have, you know, something like this. And here is a, here's a function right here, f of x. And if this is bound a and, and uh, upper bound b, then if we take the integral of f of x to dx, right, the integral from a to b of f of x dx, that's in, essentially we're finding the area underneath the curve. Right? That we know. We've also done areas between curves. So let's say we have a curve like this and we have another straight line like this. And if we are looking to find the area between the two curves, right, that is below this upper function and above the lower one, right, so here's f of x2, and this is f of x1, we know how to do that, right? We took a look at that in chapter 10 in the Red Stewart. Uh, and two ways you could do it. You could find the integral, that is the area underneath the upper one, and subtract the area underneath the lower one. Or you could combine the functions right away. You could find out what f of x1 is uh, when you subtract from it f of x2. You could find that as a function and just take the integral that. And, and that's how you can find the red part. So Having that in mind, okay, we're going to use this fact right here to explore this first part, okay, um, and and this is going to be the uh, uh, well, yeah, I guess so. This is going to be we're going to focus first on the disk part, okay, the solid of revolution as we revolve around the x axis. Um, this part right here, actually, is going to be really this as well, but it's going to be the washer method. So this video is about the disk method, okay, disk method. And really what that means is that we are going to find a completely solid uh, volume, okay. So the, the uh, three-dimensional shape that we're going to find is going to be completely solid, the entire volume. That's the disk method method, so where everything is solid and complete. The washer method, something a little bit different. Different. Uh, we're going to find um, the area when we revolve this, but it's not going to be completely solid. So that's just sort of the introduction here. Uh, this one here is when we revolve around the y-axis. So this side here we're not going to deal with right now. Okay, It's just going to be about the x-axis, and we're going to deal with the solid volume first. Okay, So this video is going to be on on number one. All right, so if you look in your textbook, and right here on page 400, we're going to do this example right here. Okay, here's the solid of revolution. That's where it's uh, introduced. And we are going to take the function f equals 2 plus x times cos x. That's going to be your function. And so it's represented by this upper bound right here what it is right there. And we're going to look at the interval between negative 2 and 2. So there's negative 2 and there's positive 2. All right? So if I just kind of uh, clip this for you, and bring that into the notes so I can muck it up. Looks like this. And um, so this is what we're doing. The function is this part right here. It's the upper boundary, right, of this what it looks like roughly. Sorry, that's not very neat. But this is the function. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to take the area underneath this, just like we normally would. We're going to look at that, and we're going to say, what would be this, the volume of the three-dimensional solid when we rotate this around the x-axis? So you can envision this going, rotating it around the x-axis. And it makes this, this solid um, piece here. See that? So this kind of looks like a fishy cracker, doesn't it? <laughs> kind of looks like one of those fish crackers, right? But really, we're starting off with this function right here, f of x, right here. And we are going to find the area, and we're going to revolve that around. Okay? So it involves the integrals. Now, we're not going to do that step by step just like that, but let me just show you how we're going to view this. Okay, let me clean this up a little bit for you. All right, notice in the textbook here, how they have uh, drawn for us in pink here, they've drawn a circle, right? This is the disc that I want you to envision, okay? It's a disc. And um, originally, so let's say it looks like this originally. Originally, what we have done to find the area is we have used the integral and we've used the function f of x. Right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take that idea, but instead of doing, and like we just learned about Riemann sums, instead of doing a series of rectangles, right, which was what the integral really is, up from the x-axis up to the function, instead of considering that, what we're going to do is we're going to consider, instead, we're going to consider circles. So we're going to consider a circle and we're going to consider a circle with a little bit of a dimension there. Okay, so like a little bit of a delta x. And if we take a whole bunch of these little circles, and the volumes, or the areas, sorry, of all these little circles, and we add them all up, then guess what? We're going to get the volume, because it's area times another dimension, delta x. And we're going to take them all into consideration. We're going to add those disks up, and we're going to get the entire volume. Okay? So what we're going to be looking at here to find this volume is we're going to be finding the integral of the area. Okay, so the function is going to be the area, and in this case, it's going to be the area of this circle. Okay? Times dx, or delta x, right, like we talked about. And, and uh, um, that's going to be the volume of the solid. What you want to keep in mind is that this part right here, okay, this is the area of the circle. So it's going to be pi r squared. All right, so again, disk method, we want to think of these as disks. And yes, the size of these disks are going to change, but you know what, because we know what this function is, and we know this function is changing with x, that automatically changes the size of all of the circles. So that's going to be taken care of. You don't have to worry about changing the size of the circles. Now, what is, this is important, what is the radius, what is the radius here of this circle? Well, it goes from uh, y equals 0 to y equals what? f of x. Okay. Yeah, so the radius of one of the disks is going to be f of x. And so really, this becomes, right, this becomes pi times f of x, all squared. You see that? Okay, so I, I don't know if I've drawn this out too long for you or not, but we start with, hey, how do we find the area under this curve, right? Well, we use an integral. And we take the integral from A to B uh, of the function itself. Well, now, if we're going to rotate it around, instead of just a two-dimensional area underneath the curve, let's think about, you know, what this would make if it revolves around. And so then we come up with this disk method, so we have a circle. All right, so in a, back to our example here. Let's just see, where is it? Uh, here's the example, and so there's the function right there, 
right? 2 plus x cos x. And as they mentioned in the book, the area of this circle is going to be pi times r squared, which is pi times f of x all squared, okay? So that's what we're dealing with. And the f of x is just defined by this upper uh, bound curve. So this is basically where we're going to go with this. And here is now the volume. Okay, it's expressed as an integral. And let's just write this out first. So the volume of this solid, okay, volume is the integral. Now we said this is, what is this, negative 2 to positive 2, I believe, right? So those are the boundaries, the, up, the, the, the bounds of integration there. And the area function is going to be pi times, and, and what was this again? It was, where is it, 2 plus, so 2 plus x cos x all squared dx. Right? And we're going to find the integral of that. Now, if we stop right there for a second, okay, do you guys understand what we're doing here so far? Does this sort of make sense? Again, we have a function, y equals f of x. And if we're rotating it about the x-axis here, we just simply treat uh, this as the upper boundary of what would be a, a circle, a washer. I'm sorry, a disk. Washers come in another time. And then we just integrate, and that will give us the 3D volume. Okay, now there are steps to integration, manual methods. I am going to show you just how to do this with the calculator, which you should know already, actually, but I'm going to get the calculator up here. All right, so a lot of times on the AP exam, they aren't going to care about, you know, how you integrate this, right? They just want to know what the volume is. So it's going to be a um, multiple choice question or something, the volume of the solid of revolution bounded by f of x equals blah, 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 from negative 2 to 2. They don't care how you do this part. So this is where, you know what, you'll have to know how to do this on the calculator to save yourself some time and stuff. <clears throat> so let's try and refresh your memory here. Um, if you want to graph this, go ahead. That's one method where you can do this second function calculate and you can graph. Um, if you don't have to graph, you can save yourself some time by doing, uh, where is it, math. And then you go down, you can actually go up and be easier. But you see function integrate is number nine. So you go down. So again, you go to math and then you go to number nine, function integrate. And then the process here is you put in the function first, then comma the variable, which is going to be x, and then comma the lower bound, comma the upper bound. So this is what you want to put in. You want to put in pi. Yes, it's a constant, but you need it in there somewhere. So pi bracket, and you type in your 2 plus x cos x bracket. And then, of course, you want to square that whole thing, the 2 plus x cos x. Make sure you use your brackets properly. And then comma x, okay, so tell it the variable with, with which, you know, dx, basically. That's the dx, right? And then from negative 2, so all separated by commas, and then up to positive 2. Okay, so take a good look at that. Math 9, function, integrate. Your function there. And then d what? dx and your bounds of integration, you hit equals, and you should come up with 52.4288. Now, if you come up with 67 or something like that, then you have to make sure that you're on radians here, not degrees. Okay? So, radians. Okay. So, so this now, 52.4288, uh, you know, cubic units or whatever, that is... Uh, that's the volume of this solid, okay? And again, um, if, it's a, uh, if it's a multiple choice question, it doesn't really matter how you get there. It's cute. Okay? So that's one example of the, the DISC method, um, solving uh, for volume.
of solids of revolution. So just to go back to this little chart here, I'm going to come back to it in another lesson. But um, if we're revolving around the x-axis, okay, then we need to be dealing with an f of x, y equals something. Okay? And then the disk method is you just take that function all right, and treat it as the radius right there. This is the radius of the volume of revolution, and that's going to be your disk method. See, disk, just the function, disk, and then you plug it into the integral right here. So uh, here's the integral. Remember, it's area function, which for the um, for our case here, we're revolving around. It's a circle, three-dimensional space, the x, and you do that. So I think the next lesson, what I'll do is I'll talk about this washer method, which is very similar, but that's your, your disk method. Okay?